Good morning, everyone. This is Jeff Crater from Hanover Excess and Surplus. I have uh, our, I'm the VP of Underwriting here. I have Beth Rivenbark, our personalized manager, on the phone with us. And I also have two of our good friends from America Reliable with uh, Christy and Jessica. Christy, I apologize. I'm not going to try to butcher your last name. And Jessica Riggles. Uh, they're going to be helping do a little demo for us today uh, to go over the new iRealize system. Uh, you guys have probably been inundated with uh, a various amount of emails coming from our um, our uh, email service announcing how we're so excited that American Reliable has launched. Uh, we've moved uh, from our prior American Reliable rating platform into iRely as of last month. So we're pretty thrilled with that. Um, and today we're going to be going over the new platform a little bit, going over what's changed with American Reliable, uh, all good things. So we are excited about that. So what I'm going to do first, I'm going to start sharing my screen with you guys. Uh, and you guys can hopefully now see the email that we just sent out on Friday. So it's always fun when you launch something over the holidays. So everyone probably just got back to work after a couple weeks off and saw a thousand emails from Hanover announcing this. So thank you for catching up on your emails. There were a good amount of you have registered over the past couple of days, so thank you for that. Uh, one of the biggest uh, new exciting parts about uh, uh, going to iRely is that we actually, I believe, have some inland North Carolina agents on the phone with us for the first time ever for an American Reliable demo because American Reliable is now available inland as as well as in our usual beach and coastal zones. That is a massive change for us. Same guidelines apply. Uh, when I say same guidelines to you inland agents, who have no idea what I'm talking about. Uh, we'll go over that in a second. But we're uh, thrilled uh, that this is available as much in Boone, uh, North Carolina, as it is in Kitty Hawk. Uh, so we're very excited about this. Uh, for the beach and coastal zones, this program continues to be uh, X-Wind, an admitted uh, AM Best A-rated product with American Reliable. Uh, once you get out of the NCJUA wind zones, out of the beach and coastal zones, it's uh, with wind. Uh, so this is a very fun and exciting time. Uh, so we just transitioned uh, as of 1219 into this new platform. Some quick uh, ideas about iRely, which uh, Jessica and Christy will get into, is it's very quick. You quote, find an issue. If everything works, you'll be able to uh, print, uh, make a payment at real time. Underwriters won't have to review, and you're ready to rock and roll. You can get a policy number uh, and a binder, and within the time it takes you to finish the whole application, uh, and the policies print the next day. Uh, some quick uh, ideas about the program itself. Uh, this is for inland and coastal again, so it's an A and best A rated product throughout North Carolina. Uh, inland, as I said, exclude uh, includes wind. Coastal and beach X is the wind. Dwelling limits up to 750 in coverage A, protection classes one through 10, secondary and seasonal, primary and secondary homes. The secondary homes we allow up to 36 weeks of rental a year. Um, we prefer for them to be managed by third party, like a property manager or real estate agent. Uh, but the question is not asked in the rater, which is always fun. Uh, included coverages, uh, we you can uh, if you're Replacement cost estimator, if you are at 100% of replacement cost, you can include tw the 25% extended replacement cost option. Uh, and iRely also allows for a lot more additional coverages than your old American Liable Raider used to. Okay? Uh, if you did not get this email, so this is an email um, that we blasted out to everyone that has some really good uh, how-to guides uh, built into it. So there's a couple, of course, it's not a virus, but you will be able to get your training manuals, right? How to run endorsements. All this fun stuff is built into this email that you'll be able to open up. You may be saying, hey, Jeff, I deleted the email. I don't know where it is. Can't blame you. Uh, you can always access that. Now we're going to start the fun part. HanoverAccess.com, all right? So this is the website that you will hopefully go to to start with your, uh, your iRely voyage, all right? So you'll see this uh, little banner at the top, okay, with the uh, announcement of the American Reliable. You can always uh, click here to pull that email up. Um, and if you're saying, hey, I didn't get it, but I want it, which we always love, you scroll to the bottom 
if you click on the news uh, tab, uh, you'll be able to sign up for our, our newsletter. And that's how you can get these types of announcements in the future. Okay? So now we're going to get to the fun part. All right? So when you get to HanoverAccess.com, the first thing you're going to do, that's out of uh, Marvel at our great website. It's Caucasian Sign In. Uh, you'll have your username and password hopefully saved because you're on this website uh, hourly, quoting new uh, homeowners risks with us. You'll sign in. If you find that your username and password don't work or you're having issues logging in, reach out to your favorite underwriter, Ed Hanover, Layla, AB, Kelsey, uh, Carol, or really anybody, uh, and we'll be able to help you out get set up correctly. Uh, if you guys all share a sign in, uh, you, you'll find that you can't all be signed in and quoting at the same time. So if we need to get people set up, just let us know. You can always let Beth know or me. We're, we're here to help. All right. So once you're logged in, you can click on Raider List. Okay. And you can go to Personalize. You're going to see all sorts of our other fun and exciting products because while we do love America Reliable, we do have a number of other products you guys can quote and access, which today is not the day to talk about. So once you see the America Reliable Homeowners I Rely system, right, you may have been used to clicking on this link down here. The NC803 Beach and Coastal, that no longer works for American Reliable. You now come to the American Reliable Homeowners I Rely system. You click, and if everything works in the background, it will automatically sign you in. And at this point, I get to kick it over to our good friends over at American Reliable, uh, Jessica and Christy, uh, to help explain how to maneuver within the system from here. So, Christy, uh, here it comes. Okay, thank you. Let us get into our screen. Is it launching? Can you see us? We see the email I sent you about prepping okay. for the call. Move the screen over. Okay. Give me just a second here. Yeah. All right, now we see it. Perfect. All right. But while they're doing yeah, that, I forgot to tell you guys. Hold on a second, Jessica. Chris, sorry about this. Uh, since you guys are all muted and you guys can't ask any questions, on your uh, go to webinar uh, little pop up thing that came up for you guys, uh, you'll see a questions uh, little section. If you shoot us any questions that you may have through there, we'll be able to answer them at the end. Okay. So if you have any questions, look for that little questions uh, section of your uh, go to webinar pop up and type them in there and we'll get to them. Thank you. Back to you guys, sorry. All right. Um, I'm Jessica Riggle, Senior Underwriter here at American Reliable, and I'm going to be doing your demo today. Um, right now, I'm logged in as a, um, a sub-producer, so this is exactly the screen that you will be seeing when you log in. Um, and this is the first home page. So I want to show you a couple of things on the home page that will be useful for you. The first one is user training, this tab here at the top. If you click on this, over here on the, on the left-hand menu bar, you're going to see a lot of different um, references for you. Um, the one that I want to pay most attention to is this iRely training manual. This is the same manual that Jeff had emailed out in, um, in his uh, email blast. But if you ever can't find it, it's right here. Um, this also, wait, that's not what I wanted. Okay, anyway, I can't get it up. But this is where it is, and it's got screenshots so that it can talk you through things. So if you find yourself in a quote application and you get stuck, this is a really good resource for you to um, look up your, the answer to your question right away. So um, this user training, um, I can't recommend it enough here. So going back to the home page. All right. So we're going to start here in the left-hand menu bar um, with there's new quote, new application, quote application inquiry, and policy inquiry. These are the ones that you're going to use the most. So um, we do have the option for a quick quote. So if, if um, you are just looking for a quick price 
um, to see how we compare with um, other carriers. You can click on this new quote. It's really easy. I'll show it to you in a minute. It's like two pages of, of entry and it gives you a price. Doesn't really run reports or anything like that, but it'll give you a price. Um, and then it gives you the option to convert it to an application if that's what you want to do. Otherwise, um, if you know that you're probably going to put the policy with American Reliable and you don't want to do the quick quote, you can go straight to new application and, um, and start your entry there. It just uh, cuts the process down a little bit um, by a couple of pages. So I'm going to start with new quote. Maybe. Okay. So I'm entered in here as a sub producer. Um, I'll pick my effective date. This is too far out, so I'm gonna go a little bit more recent, February 4th. Um, all of our policy terms are 12 months. And um, this particular sub producer has um, some different programs. Most of you will only have um, North Carolina homeowners, so that's what we're gonna click. Okay, so now we're in the quick quote. Um, if anything that has an asterisk, a red asterisk next to it is a required field. Um, you'll notice that a lot of fields are not required in the quick quote. Um, so I'm going to call this a primary home built in 2019. Maybe, there we go. 2019 value. 250,000, I'm gonna call that replacement cost. This is going to be a detached home. We'll get circuit breakers. And I'm gonna put in an address. And my address is um, actually just a random CVS that I found, but it works. All right. County. All right, Lynn has a couple of low screening questions here. Does the applicant or tenant, if tenant occupied, own, keep, or shelter any animal with a previous bite history or non domesticated animals? I'm going to say no. Uh, if you say yes, it's not going to let you quote it. Uh, is the home located in an area where four-wheel drive vehicles are recommended or required? We're going to say no. And then it asks you to read this little section about running uh, credit reports to the insured and get their permission. So I'm going to say yes, we got permission for that. Now, if you look down here at the proximity, this is the only report that runs in the quick quote process. This is the neighbor report. So what it does, is it, scan, it takes the address that we entered and it looks for neighboring properties. If there are neighbors found, it's not gonna let you quote it because of capacity concerns. So um, in this case, there's no found, or wait, there is neighbor found, so it says do not quote. This is probably because I, um, I did a test quote using the same address the other day. So. Let's see if it'll let me continue. Okay, so it's not going to let us continue on this. I'm gonna to need to get another address. So bear with me just a second. Okay, I found one. Here's another random CVS. I think we bound that CVS during our last training. I think we did. <laughs> What's going on here? Okay, give me just a second. I uh, accidentally booted myself out of this. 
Let me back into that. Just one second. Sometimes IROI doesn't use it when you use your back key. I give it one second. Why is this? There we go. There we go. All right. Sorry about that. Sorry, canceled it. Oh, we... All right, I'm going back in. Um, what we're doing to know is when you hit that proximity screen and it tells you that you can't go on, you would need to call your agent or your underwriter and get them to approve it for you. So, Home Office Hanover can approve those for you to go forward if there's an exception to the rule. So if you run into a problem like this where I um, bound coverage on that CVS the other day, um, and let's say you had written a policy and then you needed to rewrite it for some reason, you can always contact Hanover and they can help you get past that neighbor report. We just can't do it here because we're logged in as a sub producer. Jeff, pretty soon we're going to be insuring all the CVSs in Wilmington. <laughs> if we had any commercial folks on the phone, I'm sure they'd be very thrilled with that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Any shelter animals? No. Yes. Okay. So now here it's saying that there are no neighbors found and it's okay to quote. That's what we want. So next. I'm going to change this date again. It kind of lost my date before. All right, so now it's telling us which programs this qualifies for. So it qualifies for either an HO3 or an HO2. Um, most of the time you would pick the HO3. And start quote. All right, so I'm gonna plug this in with a lot of my information. This is my real date of birth. <laughs> but so um, we don't absolutely require social security numbers. You'll see here that there's no asterisk next to social. Sometimes the social can help um, locate a, um, it, you know, if, if there's credit based rating or scoring, um, it can help with that, if you, especially if you have somebody with a very common name. Um, but it's not absolutely required. The system does want you to put something in here though. So if you don't have a social security number, just use five. Five indicate to us that it's a bogus social security number. So I'm gonna go put some fives in. Um, my mailing address, I'm gonna do the same as the location. Okay. 
It also doesn't require a fill over here, but I'm going to put something in here anyway. All right, just gonna do some fives. All right, um, it's asking me for the protection class. When we get to an application, the protection class is gonna re uh, report is gonna run to verify. Um, for now, I'm just going to call it a three, and we'll see what happens when the when the report runs. Um, so it's going to be one family frame. I said that the house was built in 2019, so that's what I'm going to use for all the updates. And we'll just call it a 2,000 square foot house. Um, here's where you put in your alarms if you've got any. Um, and then it asks us just a few screening questions. Um, does it have a hip roof? I'm going to say no. Um, do all exterior openings um, have qualifying protection that was installed by a qualified contractor according to the manufacturer's specifications? I'm going to say yes. Um, is the risk located south and east of the inland waterway? I have no idea, I'm gonna say no. And then, any paid losses? I'm gonna say no. And um, does it have an IBHS designation? Um, I'm gonna call that no too. Right, so if it has that, there should be a certificate that you would submit or attach to the file so that you would get the credit for that. But in this case, we just won't put that in there. Now we're at the replacement cost. We do have a replacement cost estimator built in on the quick quote. I don't think it makes you do the estimator at this point, um, but if you do it here, you can verify that the cover J you're looking for is correct, and you can also, um, it carries over to the application. It's just one less thing you have to fill in later. So I'm gonna go through the uh, replacement cost estimator really quick because I just made up a um, a value, we see how, how close I got. So roof type, we'll call that gable and asphalt shingle. One story. It asks for construction quality. This is really important because the construction quality can really vary within, um, within a property. Um, even an older home that hasn't been updated, might have been like in 1975 it might have been really you know above average construction quality so even if it hasn't been updated since 1975 you want to look at um what what that quality of the existing um materials are on the inside because we don't do interior inspection for you to have this information if you don't know the difference between what's average and above average you can um, you can click uh, once you're in the um, in the estimator in the actual system. It'll have one of these question marks, and you can click it, and it'll give you definitions of what all these are. Um, so right now, I'm just going to call it average. Not on the historic registry. I'm not giving it a basement. We'll say yes to a garage and yes to a deck. No to porch, and then it's got other areas in here. If I click on this, um, it, it t tells you what other areas might be there. So breezeway, carport, um, crawl space, you know, some, um, you know, additional information that makes the house unique. I'm gonna say no. And the other thing I really wanna call attention to with your estimators is the location. Because um, again, the location can be um, of the property greatly impacts our ability to reconstruct the home. Um, and um, so let me give you some examples here. So let's say you have a house that's in a large city and it's uh, located right on a really bustling street that gets a lot of traffic. If, you, um, if we need to rebuild a house on that street, we may be looking at having to purchase extra permits. We might have to work off hours to avoid high traffic times. Um, might have trouble trucking in some of the materials and large equipment. So, um, so it would cost um, more to construct a home, reconstruct a home, 
in say inner city Chicago than it would, you know, in a suburban neighborhood. Um, so, but if you click these definitions, you'll see there's a lot of them that are going to be coastal. Um, you'll, you'll probably see more coastal and suburban than anything else. If a house is located, it might be located in Chicago, but if it's in a neighborhood, like in a quiet neighborhood, we would consider that suburban, even if it's in the, technically in the city, we're looking at more of the neighborhood and the surrounding area where, um, where the property is located. So um, the system will automatically default to suburban. Just don't let that um, fool you. Um, always take a look at where that property is located. Um, dwelling shape, we'll just call it rectangular. Gable roof, foundation, I'll call it concrete block. And no, I made this a uh, slab, this is just a basement. Slope, I'm gonna say flat. Uh, debris removal, you can purchase um, more for debris removal. It defaults to 5%. Dwelling style, I'm just gonna call this a ranch. And the exterior, um, I'm gonna call it vinyl siding. Have there been any re renovations in the last 40 years? Our house is brand new, so we don't need to worry about that. And then it asks you for unique items, uh, such as a custom bar, sauna room, imported fireplace, et cetera. So again, you can use your, um, your tab here and it kind of gives you some definitions. All right, so I'm gonna get the cost estimator now, see how I did with my 250. Okay, so what it did is it saw that I entered in a garage and a deck and it wants more information on those items. So I'm gonna scroll up and put in some information on, on the garage and call it an attached garage. If it's a carport, you can put the carport here under garage also. Regular wood deck, nothing fancy. All right, now I'm gonna get my price. All right, so how did I do? So I put this in at 250,000. The estimator's coming in at 281. We do require that you insure homes for 100% replacement cost if you're if you have a replacement cost policy. So I'm going to change that to 281 so that we're in line with our um, estimator. We don't want to underinsure anyone. Then looking at the coverages, um, if you have other structures beyond, you know, like that you think is going to be on this 28,000 level have a big large shop or something like that or a full building, you can add another structure and um, increase this amount. Um, personal property, I'm gonna change this to replacement cost. Um, I can also purchase additional um, coverage C and coverage D, um, which I'm not gonna worry about here, but I am gonna put a little extra liability on them. And my deductible, I'm just gonna go with a thousand. And here's some optional coverages. Um, I am going to add, this is the primary home, I'm gonna add per, uh, personal injury, because that's always a good one for people to have. And I'm gonna give myself some water back up. And um, right here, the additional, uh, specified additional amount of insurance additional 25%, that's your extended replacement cost. So again, um, I recommend that. And then that's it for my optional coverages. Um, all right, now rate. So this is really only two screens plus the estimator. So 
and I didn't even have to do the estimator if I didn't want. So you can actually get a quick quote in like, you know, five minutes if you have the information at your fingertips. All right, so let's see our price. Uh, total premium is um, $724 plus the policy fees. It lets you know what the um, payment schedules are, what your payment options are. And then down here at the bottom, we have a few options. So you can um, print the summary if you want to present this quote to somebody. You can modify the quote if, um, say, you want to change the effective date for it. Um, or you can convert it to an application. So that's what we're going to do now. We're going to say that the insured wanted to do this, and we're going to convert it to an application. And this is going to drag most of the entry that we've already done into the app. All right. So it's asking us a few questions. Most of this we already have entered. Um, this time, a daytime phone number is required. Um, but again, I just put in five. And it's also requiring a social security, it, it will require something in for social security, and I just had put fives in there. The other thing that it's going to require is employment status and employer name. So I'm just going to call myself retired because that would be wonderful if I could retire to North Carolina. Um, I don't need to put in a, a employer, but I'm just going to put unknown because I don't know if that's going to ask for something. And some fives. If I want to add a co-applicant, like a spouse or, or a co-owner, I can do that here, co-applicant. Um, but otherwise, I'm okay. I'm going to continue. So the first thing you see, okay, look here across the top. These are your tabs for the application. These are the pages. So once you go through these, you can toggle back and forth. So if you're down on the coverages screen here and you get – more information on um, the mortgage information you want to add that you can just click back on this tab for interested parties and add the mortgage information so it does let you go back and forth between screens um, the first screen here we just did the applicant now we're going to underwriting these um, these questions or these statements here we're asking if the insured has read and agrees with all the above statements if they say no to any one of these statements, the policy is not eligible. So um, have they been convicted of um, arson or fraud? Um, does the home have permanently installed water, electricity, and sewage utilities? Um, does it have existing damage? Uh, does it have um, polybutylene pipes? Um, you know, those are the kinds of questions it's going to ask here. You can kind of read through those. Um, does it have more than four units? So we're going to say that the applicant has read all these and um, agrees with all the above statements, and we'll say yes. And then it opens up some more underwriting questions. Now, these questions, if you answer yes to them, it might be okay, it might not be, but some of these might require a little more information that the underwriter is going to want um, in order to approve the policy. So, do they have permanently installed steps on all the entrances of the homes? We'll say yes. File bankruptcy, no. Um, all right. I'm just going to go through some of these. Uh, do they have handrails? Yes. Um, uninsured? Nope. Um, I'm going to say yes to horses. I'm going to say yes to a couple of these. And I'm also going to say yes to the home is on more than five acres. So if it's more than five acres, um, an underwriter is going to review it and, um, and have some questions about the, that land use. Uh, we will write up to 25 acres. Uh, we just And if it's above 25 acres, a little bit, you can have to call your underwriter. And um, depending on the situations, they might be approved on a case-by-case -case basis. Um, any farming, I'm going to say no. Any business, no. Uh, okay, anything canceled for underwriting reasons? No. Okay, now I'm going to save and continue. 
the system's going to take a look at my answers and let me know if there's more information that's required. Okay, so I, uh, it says, does the dwelling have any steps or porches over two feet in height without handrails? Oops, I made a mistake. It does have handrails, so I'm going to change this. That will, when I change that, it's going to remove that message from the bottom for question four. And then here in question seven, um, it wants some additional information on the horses or livestock or farm animals. So um, the, the thing that takes time with underwriting and slows down your application from being issued into a policy is whenever you have to do back and forth with the underwriter. So if the underwriter has questions and they have to email you and then you have to email them back and, and stuff like that, it can slow down the process of getting the quote issued. So what I rely is telling you here is that the underwriter is going to ask you questions about these issues. So head it off in, in the beginning and just give them the information you know they're going to have questions on. So I'm going to say that they have uh, two horses, no boarding, no lessons. Well, I don't know how to spell boarding, sorry. And personal use. So we know that the underwriter's gonna ask those questions about horses. So we just wanna make sure that we answer them up front, prevent some of that email back and forth. And then it's asking a few questions about the acres. So I'm gonna say 10 acres, personal use, no crops. No livestock. All right. Then if we're happy with our answers, we're going to hit save and continue. Um, a couple of things I want to show you. These fields here for notes are pretty small to put your comments in. If you have um, more comments that then can fit in this box, click down here to the notepad. And the notepad, you can write as many notes as you want in here. Now, um, the underwriters can see these notes. The underwriters are trained to look for notes. So um, again, anytime you can put notes in to prevent um, back and forth emails, I'm sure your underwriters will greatly appreciate it. So you can put a note in here and then submit it and it's attached to the policy and it doesn't go away. Another thing you can do here is this attachments button. So let's say we added um, some scheduled jewelry and you know for sure the underwriter is going to ask for a copy of the appraisal. You can attach the appraisal here. And again, underwriters are trained to check this so before they send off an email to you. So, um, so they can have all the information at their fingertips. Um, to approve your policy. I'm going to save and continue. All right, so the message down here is it's telling you that underwriting this application is going to be submitted for approval for questions seven and eight. Um, so that's your, um, your horses and your acreage. It's just letting you know that this is going to be flagged by underwriting. Interested parties is where you would put an additional insured or um, interested party, mortgage, that kind of stuff. We're not going to do that now. Property screen is asking a little bit of information on that. So is the location address same as mailing? Yes. And then purchase date. I'm going to say it's purchased this month. Oops. And it's only looking for a month and date here. Purchase price, and I'll say 250. Is that enough zeros? Yes, okay. Um, most of this information we have in here, but it's going to ask a little more specifics on the mechanical. So um, all of our, since this is a new home, all, everything's going to be 2019. That's what kind of plumbing it is. We'll go with copper. And 
and our heat source, the gas forced air. All right, Lynn is asking if we have any supplemental heating devices, um, such as warm wood burning stoves or fireplaces or anything like that. And then the question down here is it, only if you check yes. Let's say we are going to check yes on a wood stove. So is the rest equipped with a supplemental heating device that was installed by a licensed contractor? I'm going to say yes, it was installed by a licensed contractor. Um, if it if you say no to that, the underwriter is going to ask for photos of that wood stove and possibly a wood stove uh, questionnaire. But if I didn't have a wood stove here, I could just skip this question and it's fine. Um, productive devices, I'm just going to let that go. I, I don't have any. Oh, I'll give them a smoke detector because they're responsible. Um, <clears throat> And then additional information. So does the applicant or tenant um, have any of the following dog breeds? So Akitas, um, Anatolian Shepherds, Chows, Dobermans, Pitbulls, Pressa Canario, Rottweilers, Wolf or Wolf Hybrids, or any mix of these breeds? We will say no. Now, if you say yes there, that's not, um, that it's not gonna make your policy ineligible, but it will add an exclusion for uh, these breeds. So if you have somebody with a pit bull, you're looking to place it, we can write the homeowner's insurance. We just won't write liability on the pit bull. Uh, do we have a, a swimming pool with um, that does not have a fence? I'm gonna say no. Is there a trampoline? No. Again, if you say yes to a trampoline, it's not that um, it, it, we won't, we'll still write the policy, but you'll have a trampoline exclusion added. Um, okay, skip down. All right. So then protection class. I'm going to say it's in town, I assume, because all CVSs are in town. And save and continue. Okay, so now we're getting a message here. Now, this is where the protection class, the ISO protection class report runs. I said this was a three, um, but ISO coming back saying, no, this property is a protection class four. Um, and it says, do you want to override the ISO protection class? Um, the answer to this is going to be 99.999% of the time, no. You should never be overriding the ISO protection class. We are filed as a strict ISO um, carrier. Um, so we always want to rate for the ISO protection class. The exception to that is let's say you have a brand new house that doesn't have, an, that can't get a valid ISO report on it yet because the street's too new. You're going to see it's going to show you like a it'll be like a dash sign and a one or something like that. It, it's obviously an error. Um, in that case, um, you would say yes to override the protection class and put in the protection class that the property should be, and the um, it'll still refer to underwriting, but um, the underwriter can make that determination to accept with your um, your protection class. Um, if you do get this, this, and we see that we do have a valid ISO protection class score, we would change this protection class before so that it matches. And the only reason I say to do it, the, the system will look good if you don't match it, but the policy will refer to the underwriter every year because the protection class is a mismatch, and you don't want to irritate your underwriters. So um, I always put it so it matches. And then I'm going to save and continue. Lost experience, this is where you order your clue. I'm going to order clue and see if CVS has turned in any claims. And they have not. We're in a testing environment anyway, so no clue report is going to come back for us. If there is claim, if there are claims that come back on this, 
American Reliable is different from most other property insurance carriers because we only rate claims that occurred at this location, at this insured location, while owned by this insured. So if claims were to come back here for, this is a new purchase for, for this insured. So if they had a claim on their former primary home, we don't rate for that. We don't uh, surcharge them for claims that occurred at their prior residence, which is very different from a lot of insurance carriers. Um, or if claims show up and they are, um, are for the prior owner or whatever, we, we obviously wouldn't rate for those either. So if a claim were to come up here, it's going to ask you to confirm it, which means, is this a claim that should be rated for or not? And so um, if you say no, this should not be rated for, it's gonna ask you why, and there's a little drop down, you just pick something, okay? But we can't really see that because we're in a test environment. So I'm just gonna say there's no claims at this location and continue. And we're on our coverages screen. We've already done our replacement cost estimator, but um, if we didn't, this is where we would get it. Um, we already put in the coverages, so I'm pretty confident those can stay. Here's where we can add some exclusions if we want to. The system's not automatically adding like trampoline exclusion or the animal exclusion or anything because we didn't answer yes to those previous questions. But if you wanted to add um, an exclusion, you could. Save and continue. This is the form screen. It just tells you which forms will be attached to the policy. Let's be honest, most of you just click forward through this. All right, so now we're on the summary screen. We're at the end. Um, what I would like to, um, okay, so you can look through here, make sure that your premium um, is the same as your quote. There was a little bit of a change on mine um, for some reason that I'm not sure. Um, it tells you here at the bottom that this must be submitted for approval as the effective date cannot be backdated from current system. Okay, I did something weird with the date, so don't worry, don't worry about that. I must have when I went and put in the date. It's the fun stuff. testing. It's the fun testing uh, date. Yeah, it's three months in the future. Yeah. Right, yeah. Right. Yeah. So normally you would not do that. Um, up here at the top, if you look at these tabs, notice how there's green checks on most of these tabs. That means there's no issues on these, on these tabs. There's nothing on here that underwriting is going to be concerned about. Um, the applicant tab is where the, um, where the uh, date thing is. And then the underwriting tab is where we answered yes to those questions about the horses and the acreage. So, the, the yellow caution uh, symbol is just to let you know, hey, an underwriter is going to look at this. It's not going to just fly through the system and issue right away. Somebody's going to have to look at it. Um, so you know up front if somebody's going to look at something. Now, if we had entered something on one of these policies or uh, on one of these pages that was absolutely no way would we write it, you'd see like a red plus sign here and saying or a red X basically saying you can't go further than this. So hopefully you won't be seeing that. But um so we know up front what it's going to be referring to the underwriter on. Again, I strongly recommend using your notepad uh, to communicate anything you need to communicate with your underwriter. Um, they will very much appreciate not having to do back and forth emails. Um, anything that needs to be attached, you can go ahead and do that. Um, uh, if you want to attach a prior insurance deck sheet or any documents that you want to go along with this policy, you can just attach them here. Um, and then you read these questions to the applicant. If they want to take this, um, you know, do they agree? Yes, yes, yes. Um, you can print the app here by clicking on app summary. And then, um, well, let's just do that. Check 
sorry, it's thinking. Oh yeah, um, environment. I'm in a test environment, so it's not gonna let me do that. But here's where you would print your app if you would like to get signatures and all that um, good stuff. And then when you're done, you would submit it to the underwriter for review. Um, the underwriter will get that as a message in their message queue and they will handle that for you. So this is the basic guide of how to write business in IRLI. There's one last thing I would like to show you, and I'm gonna go back here to the home screen. All right, so now we need to talk about messages. As a sub producer, you're not gonna get a lot of messages, um, but um, if, you, if, a, um, if you submit this application to underwriting, the underwriter has three options. They can approve, or they can deny, or they can send it back to you for more information. Um, if they do that, you're going to get a message in your message queue. Um, if you click messages, it'll take you into the message system, or you can click it down here. It tells you if you have any messages or not. Um, this message queue doesn't have any messages, um, or at least it shouldn't. Oh, it's got a test message in here for you. So this is what um, a test message would look like. Uh, it shows that this re app referred, um, and it says new business has been submitted, so it means that an underwriter is reviewing it. Um, if it um, gets sent back to you for more information, it'll tell you that here too. So um, I'm, you know, there's not much more that I need to show you with that, but. Um, just know that it's a good practice to get into to check your I rely every day and just look for messages, especially if you're writing business and you want to see what's gone through the system, what hasn't gone through the system, that kind of stuff. Another thing that I'd like to just say, if we had issued that policy, you would get a pop-up right away with an issuance receipt, which basically tells you that it, it issued. That issuance receipt also might contain some trailing documents to present to the insured. Um, so you want to print that and give that to the insured and tell you if there's anything required by underwriting. So let's say we had yet answered yes to that wood stove, but we said no to it was professionally installed. So that issuance receipt is going to tell you, hey, you need to submit photos for this. So you know up front what you need to get and get those into the underwriter as soon as possible. Is there any questions? Jeff, have you gotten any questions through the chat? Oh, yes, sorry. Oh my goodness, sorry about that. Yes, Jeff Crater's back. <laughs> Christy and Jessica, thank you guys so much. I mean, I, I know I've learned learned a bunch. Um, a couple of questions did come in. Oh, one uh, I think had their speakers muted, but I think they fixed that. Um, one of the questions is: uh, Is wind resistant glass now required? Uh, no, it's not. Um, but it's just a question. If you answer it, uh, thank you. <laughs> uh, is there somewhere where we can find underwriting guidelines for the program? Uh, we're tightening those up right now. Uh, we're working on something for you guys, our friendly uh, retailers out there in the field that will uh, hopefully help uh, with this a little bit. Um, and um, can we show uh, where to find the invoice uh, after a policy is issued? Yeah, so um, I couldn't because I was in a test system. But if you That's were right. to submit that and um, and accept it, you can make a payment on it right there. Right, and it'll also give you the invoice right there at the very end of the policy. Awesome. And you guys, that's one of the fun things about this. Uh, you won't be mailing checks to the Hanover uh, lockbox anymore for uh, American Reliable. Uh, those will be going through American Reliable now. So they'll be able to take installments, not installments, but they'll be able to take a, Payments via check, charge. I don't think you guys are taking gold bullion anymore, uh, but uh, through the most major uh, payment <laughs> processes. Um, 
and again, if you guys have any questions, we'll keep this open for another uh, couple seconds, see if any other questions come in. Uh, but uh, again, it's it's a very uh, user-friendly system once you guys get into it. Um, the renewals, uh, there is an update. Uh, if you're waiting on renewals and wondering where the heck they are, uh, we are pushing uh, through March 1st, uh, 2020 renewals now uh, in our uh, in our legacy system. Uh, and we should be starting with uh, March 1st uh, renewals in iRely, hopefully very shortly. Uh, it's a bit of a process to get all these uh, renewals from one system into the other. Uh, so sorry if you guys have been waiting on them. I know Nicole and Franny have been pushing on our in our underwriting team have been pushing as far as they can to get these out. Uh, but they should be back to you guys uh, shortly. I think uh, as of yesterday, they were in uh, like February 15th, which I know is a little tighter than we usually are, but we should be uh, uh, finishing out the month of uh, March or the month of February here shortly for, for renewals. Um, but since I have not seen any other questions pop up, uh, I'm just going to say thank you once again, Jessica uh, and uh, Christy. Uh, we appreciate you guys waking up early. They're out in uh, Phoenix, uh, Scottsdale, Arizona. Uh, so it was a bit of an early one for them again today, and we appreciate you guys calling in. Uh, if you guys have any questions, bug your favorite underwriter, please, here at Hanover. Call Layla, Carol, AB, Kelsey. Uh, Kelsey's been on the phone patiently this entire time, so she's an all-star now with all this. Uh, same with Beth, our personalized manager. If you guys need anything, just let us know. Thank you again. Have a wonderful Tuesday. Uh, and. Uh, have a great uh, 2020. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. And we'll thank be. Thank you, guys. All right. Thank you. Thank you.